Welcome to Saving the Past, IMGD. Well, I'm glad you folks could all join me today. And um, I just want to say I took a little time off and it was really great. I enjoyed a little time um, exploring areas in the mountains that I love to go to. Um, I went to an old mining camp called Caribou, which most of it is gone today, but there are still a few active mines up there. So I went and enjoyed a little time up there and um, just had a great time getting away from it all. But just before I went away, I had somebody get in touch with me with some coins they wanted to get rid of. And I took a look at what they had. And most of it was all common material. And then they brought out these two pieces which at first look, look like old trade dollars. And um, actually at a quick glance, I could see where somebody could be deceived on these, but these both turned out to be fake. Now, um, <clears throat> I told them that even though they were fake, and I went down the line with them and showed them all the things that led to these being fake, um, and I'm going to go over a few things with you right now. This one's marked an 1874S. This one's marked an 1873S. So let me set up a piece of equipment and um, then I will go over a few of these things with you and show you what I found. So I've got this set up. I ran a few tests on these with the people there. I weighed these coins. I measured them. I ran a test on the Sigma Metallics um, and I actually was a little bit surprised at the readings that I got on these coins, but overall I will show you all the things that led to these being fake and why you should be very cautious with any silver you buy because um, the same thing could happen even with a silver bullion bar. But let's start off now. I've got this set for silver, 90% pre 1900. And um, I'm going to lay this coin on here. Whoops, I forgot to run. Okay, so we're ready for that. And you could see that that's testing as a good coin. It's testing within the brackets there. Turn it over the other side. It's just outside of it, but if I move it just a little bit, it winds up being in the brackets. So this other one here, let's lay that on there and see what we get. That one also shows up right within the brackets of pre-1900 90% silver. Let's turn it over and we're going to get the same exact reading. It is between um, the brackets for 90% silver. So based on, and this is a pretty expensive piece of equipment, based on a test with this machine, this would indicate that these are good coins. So let's move this out of the way and let me go over a few of the things here that made me realize very quickly. I mean, it did not take me long to realize what we had here because just looking at them, this one here, and I'm going to see if I can do this without too much light on them, but this one here has kind of a brassy look to it. Now, there, it's not unusual for silver to oxidize with a golden color, but this kind of has a greenish yellow color to it, and it looks very crudely made. The second one the coloring of it looks better, but again, it's very crudely made, and I will show you some of that underneath um, the digital um, viewer in a minute. So the next thing I did after testing them on that uh, machine, uh, uh, first thing I did was I looked at these under magnification, and I knew immediately that they weren't real. But then I got thrown off with that test on the machine indicating that they were good. So the next thing I did was I measured these coins using a millimeter gauge. Now, a real, uh, a real trade dollar should be 38.1 millimeters, 
Well, on the 1874, this one here, when I measured it, it measured 39.5 in one direction and 42 millimeters in another direction. So, number one, it wasn't round. And number two, it was larger than what um, a real trade dollar should be. And then I measured this one here. And again, they should be 38.1 millimeters. This one went 38.72 to 38.9 millimeters. So a little closer to round and just a slight bit larger than what it should be. So then I weighed both of them. Trade dollars should weigh 27.22 grams. Now, you have to allow some for wear and tear. And both of these coins, the way you would see them, um, they were made to look like they had been in circulation for some time. So you should expect that it's going to weigh less than 27.22 grams. On the 1873, this one weighed 27.6 grams, so a little bit over. Now, if this was a mint condition coin, um, you know, in a high grade, I would give that allowance a little bit, but that's a worn coin. The 1874 here, it wound up weighing 28.7 grams, so way above where a uncirculated, newly minted one would be. So there's my next telltale sign. I've got two coins here that were out of round, larger in diameter, and they both weighed more than what um, we should have. So well, the next thing I decided to do was to look at these underneath the digital viewer. Um, I looked at them um, under a um, loop, a 10 power loop, but then I decided to look at them under the digital viewer. So let's set that up. Let's... So anyway, this is the one that's got kind of the brassy color to it. And as soon as I slide that underneath there, you could see how crudely this is made. Um, and my guess would be what we have here is these were pieces that they molded from an original and then cast them. I looked very carefully for a seam mark, which you should see someplace uh, when a piece is molded and cast. I did not find it, so I have to assume that extra work was done afterwards. You can see letters were incomplete, um, pretty poorly done. So, I mean, all this pitting that's on here is what happens uh, when you use certain metals um, in the casting process. You get a little bit of pitting or porosity if you overheat the metal or if the metal's old. But now let's take a look at this one. We've got the same thing here, poorly defined um, details in it, lots of pitting in it. But then I came down to the bottom down here. You could see some of these black spots that are on here. Um, those are all a result of casting. And here's my seam line. It almost makes it look like um, it's a die crack, but that is a seam line there from a mold that was used to make this. And then I came down here to the date. And I hope this is going to show up. But on the number eight here, we've got copper showing through. So I did not run a specific gravity test on these. There's no reason for me to have to because I, with the tests that I did do, um, it indicated that these were not real. So what I'm getting at here is I used a, an expensive piece of equipment in the beginning to um, check both of these and they both checked as though they were um, real 90% pre-1900 um, silver coins. So that piece of equipment um, failed me on that. And this is a good reason why you've got to run multiple tests on pieces you buy. 
Um, these happen to be very poorly done, and just by eye I was able to tell. But I have come across over the years pieces that are, and they have gotten a lot better at faking some of these coins. I, I think I showed you folks some quarters not long ago that were faked, um, that were marked as silver, but they were not silver. Um, some of these have gotten extremely good, and some of the bullion um, bars and rounds have gotten extremely good. So unless you know the source you're buying from, you really should take the time to run some tests on what you're buying. Now again, one last test I could have run on this would have been a specific gravity test without damaging it. Um, you don't want to use um, an acid test on coins or good bullion, so that's a test you're really going to uh, want to avoid. But with all these other tests, with the sigma, with weighing them, with measuring them, with checking them underneath the loop, uh, we were able to determine what we had here. And so I hope that helped a little bit. Um, I guess the best thing I can suggest to you is buy off of people you know and trust. Be very careful when buying online or at flea markets or I don't know where this person got these from. I didn't want to delve in too much because I didn't want to embarrass them over what they bought. You can find coins all over the place. You can find silver bullion all over the place. So unless you know the people you're buying from, or unless you're really confident in your own skills, I'd be very careful out there with anything you buy. And again, I hope this helped today. I'm glad to be back. I'm looking forward to seeing what your comments are, and I will be doing a couple other videos here in the near future. I do want to get around to doing one for um, a gold and silver update, um, but... I need a little time to get back into action here and uh, update myself on what's going on. And until next time, please, if this is your first time here, please subscribe. I can um, click the little bell notification next to uh, the subscribe button and like the video. And to all of you that have been with me since the beginning, you know how much I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, until next time, have a great day. This is GD. Take care.